farm. Do you know the tea of this video? I'd recorded, started editing until I got to a particular part of the video and then I discovered that there was no audio. Whatever happened, I do not know, but there was no audio. This was a 14 minute long video that I sat down, prepared for, did everything, only to discover while I was editing that there was no audio. I could not cry, but anyway, we move, we fall, we pick up ourselves and we stand up again. This is the reason why you have to watch this video for me. Please watch it. You're welcome back to my channel. My name is Onoza C and this is Salvation Therapy. I am super excited to have you here. Thank you so much to my new soul. Be super excited to have you guys here. Thank you. Do remember to like, do remember to subscribe to the channel. Let's get into today's conversation. Today, through the help of God, I'm going to be talking about church hurt. In this video, I'm going to be using myself as example because you'll be able to relate and be able to discover some of the things that you're still holding to your heart. Now, I want to give us a backstory on what it means to be in a church. We have this very nation of a church in our head that has really gotten into our mindset that the enemy is really using against us as children of God or as human beings. Let me say as human beings in this world. The church is not a perfect place. In fact, it is called that it is for the perfecting of the saints that means we go there and we get perfected as we go as we engage with the word of god and as we as we engage with you know the sermons the prayers and all of that but we are human beings angels don't make up the church human beings make up the church i never knew this before now because i used to feel like church people they should know better but unfortunately we most times do the worst we don't know better Mm, we don't let's just it's us it's us i'm a part of the church you're a part of the church in case you're a christian and you're watching me so when i was a child or let me say my green years i was very active in church in fact my parents were active ministers in church my dad used to pastor a parish if you know redeem you understand what it means to be a pastor parishing a particular church um, one time your parents are here you're already mingling with people and then they transfer you for no reason and you know you go and start you start trying to make new friends make no not for no reason for the propagation of the gospel okay try to make new friends do all those things and almost it's not funny right it's not easy so i was that particular child that that was how i was raised i was raised you know as a pastor's child but for me, I enjoyed it because I liked being in the choir because when your dad parish in the church, a growing church meant that you're going to be active in all the departments. So I was in the choir. I was, I liked it. I had this very charming personality that people love that any small thing they're like, oh, that's a pastor's child, that's a pastor's child. And he used to make me so happy. Like, I really enjoyed I enjoyed it. Okay. Going up, I enjoyed it. One of the churches that my parents were in charge of, they got transferred from there and then we had to stay because it was quite close to the house and where they were transferred to was far from the house so my parents just felt like you know what you guys should stay back and then the church people too being that i was very active in the choir and very active in church and everything they're like okay you people can go but let your children stay back so myself and my siblings were actively attending that particular parish but my parents moved to the new place they were transferred to and being there i was quite active i had not gained admission at the time i was quite active people loved me people were endeared to me my mates older people everybody really liked me right i'm giving you this backstory for you to understand what will be you know will be leading up to the plot of the story right so when i get admission i was already i think i was already yeah so at some point i became a choir leader and then i gained admission and i was still very active whenever i came home it was always going to be it was always fire like yes this sister is back you know one day i got a call from my pastor and in school while i was in school i got a call from my pastor you know they started giving me the story of you know when god wanted to anoint david he, they, they didn't sit down until david came there was so much urgency so much rush in a stone i'm like okay what's going on someone else also called me ah, from church in fact i was scared because at the time my dad was not feeling fine he was sick and he died you know um he died he eventually died but you know was sick so i was sort of scared i called my mom i asked her i think because i was that scared i had to call my mom to ask her if there was anything and my mom said nothing i said okay they're calling me from church and they're saying i should come home my mom was like nobody called her so i told her to pretend like nothing was going to happen she shouldn't call them she shouldn't mention it and 
they, you know, they were really calling me like that. I'm like, okay, so I then I started thinking about it. If you people wanted to give me a position in church, it's something that you could have given to me. Like it's something you could do without, you know, asking me to come all the way from me to Lagos. In fact, I had a big dancey back then in school, and she was like, I shouldn't go vehemently telling me not to go, but I just had to respect my leaders, and then they sent me transport fare and said I was going to um, take care of the transportation that I should just get myself home. So I came home. I remember coming home. I came for a choir rehearsal and I was trying to pick, like trying to sniff around to ask like I was trying to sniff around to ask like what was going on? Does anybody know why I'm here? And nobody knew. Nobody had the information. So immediately after choir rehearsal that day, they told me the pastors, the ministers. So actually it was not just um so so it wasn't just the pastor um all the ministers people that i regarded and i still regard anyway <laughs> so um they all were involved and they told me to come with them so i'm like okay i found myself in the house of a fellow church member the man you know attends my church and that was when i got to know that okay the man said he would like me like the man mentioned to the pastor that he would like me to marry his son and his son at the time wasn't living in nigeria was living in poland and you know they felt they were excited and according to the ministers they prayed about it they got a word for it and you know when god wants to compensate you there's a way he compensates you in their world and ah fine at the time because i was that girl that was always very jolly nice and all but i knew what i i, I wanted I had a very tough heart. Like you wouldn't know, except you're my family or you're my very close friends. I don't take nonsense. So at that point, when you were saying that thing, and the fact that I was in the house of the person, in fact, they gave me the picture of the person that day. Guess what? The guy also landed in Nigeria that day. So it was like an impromptu meet. They wanted me to meet the guy and the guy to meet me before he went back to Nigeria and um, went back to Poland. And I'm like, okay. I may not have the full picture of what God wants to do with me, but I know this is not, I don't know, it's not looking like it. I'm still an undergraduate. I was in 200 level at the time. I was still very young. I still had my life ahead of me. I don't even know this person. Like, I don't know you. I don't know what you do over there. I can't just go in the name of God wants to compensate me. And okay, where are my parents here? Why are you people not discussing with my parents? So I got back home and I told my mom and my dad, and they were furious. They were very angry, but I told my mom to keep her cool or to say anything for us to watch how this was going to unfold. Immediately at that time, I became bitter. I resented them because I felt like, what do you guys really take me for? Right? So at the end of the day, when I got back to school, I told this my big auntie and she was like, I told you not to go home. I told you not to go home. These guys are very funny. How can you receive somebody for somebody? Like you're not even telling the girl to go and pray. This guy didn't even look like the kind of person. How? Okay, so I don't want to make this about vanity, but I'm just talking that I, I, I just knew um, he called me. I took my number, he called me. I read that day, I told him not to call me again, that I think that it doesn't make sense. Both of us are adults. I believe that we have somebody where he is. And and the guy was like, thank you very much. That is so happy that I said it like that, that he already had someone he was dating in Holland. I said, oh, nice. So he didn't call me again. Guess what? These guys were calling me, my pastors. I mean, I think my pastor, they called me and asked me if he has called, if the guy had called me, what we had said. And I told him there and then, I told him not to call me again I was like ah why i said yeah i'm totally not to call me again that's not god's plan for me and then i later heard that somebody um because of course being that you're an older person um your mates are getting married you're not married and somebody told me that they mentioned it as an example that if if i wasn't being proud i would have been married and god already knew what he was going to do with me and all i said wow really like somebody I don't know from anywhere. You just, who does that? And you said you received him for me. Apparently, the guy was already in love with someone else. I was already dating in Holland. So how does it even make sense? So I became very angry. And I never, I never became the same girl again. I blocked people out. I never wanted to be close to the leadership of any church. And, you know, I just, I just switched from zero to hundred. And so why am I saying this? Recently, when I was having my devotion, um, the Holy Spirit brought that to my memory. And like, you're still, it's been a long time here, but you still carry these people in your mind. You still don't like them. And that's the truth. I've never had to be around them like that. But whenever I, maybe I come across them online, in, in fact, the said pastor sent me a message one time on Telegram. And I just read the message and I blocked him. It was recently, I blocked him like, what is this? And I 
all these pictures made me realize that see, some people at the time it was their level of exposure it was their level of knowledge it was what they knew at the time it was how they could handle something at the time because even me there's some things i did back then that i would no longer try again like i know better so if i can make mistakes and admit that i made mistakes or or realize that i've made a mistake why not you know, give them the same grace give them the same you know opportunity and just let everything go so it was at that point i just said you know what i let it go i i, I genuinely 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 let this thing go i forgive these guys and all so why am i telling you this i'm telling you this because i want you to understand that see you can't be angry at god because of what human beings have done like i said as i started the church is not the perfecting of the saints the leadership of your church could have done something very wrong you need to understand that it could be their level of knowledge at the time everybody is not perfect no the church is not filled with angels the, the church is not filled with angels it's filled with human beings and human beings will definitely be human beings human beings will talk human beings will do things that will get you angry human beings will be annoying you will be sick they will not get in touch with you they would judge you they will see it's human beings that make up the church that's why the bible says you have to look unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith look for the things around him did not get distracted instead he was looking at the goal what's our goal to have a perfect relationship with the father to have a perfect relationship with our father to be able to connect with him so that when he comes we'll be able to go with him so don't let anybody stop you from worshiping god don't let anybody stop you from um being that happy jolly person that you've always been understand that the church is not the perfect if you leave that church and go to another church it's still human beings that you're going to meet today mm. it's still human beings worship god be set boundaries let there be boundaries know the things that you can say and the things you cannot say you can set boundaries on how much you want people to know about you but don't carry resentment don't carry bitterness because the thing the enemy uses against us believers is anger bitterness resentment he uses it a lot against us and we know that our god is love he says we should forgive others as he forgives us our trespasses we have done worse to god we keep falling and he keeps picking us up he keeps washing us with his blood he, keep, he keeps you know helping us so why are we not going to extend the same grace to our fellow humans so i'm just here to tell you that we are sorry for whatever it is that we might have done we might not be able to heal you of it but i know god can heal you of it and please just don't let any anything cut your relationship with God. Stay there, stay with God, love his people. He will give you grace to forgive and you're going to be fine. I hope that this video would minister to you. I you allow God, I hope that you allow God to heal you and you just release your emotions to him. I'll come your way again very soon. Welcome to the month of July. You think I was gonna forget? No welcome to july july is going to be wonderful july is going to be nice july is going to be great it's going to be filled with favor in the name of jesus i'll see you guys again